In the first example, we saw how two magnets that are aligned and separated by a distance, how do they behave, what kind of forces are there. So let us um, have another example where the magnets are not necessarily aligned with each other. So let me go ahead and create the first magnet as before. It's uh, three centimeters, excuse me. So this magnet dimension is going to be just as before, three centimeters and it's one centimeter. And then here, I uh, let me have another magnet, maybe uh, somewhere starting here. And uh, with the same dimension, three centimeters and one centimeter. Okay. So I'm going to create them as surfaces. So I have two magnets aligned this way. Let's see how the magnetic flux behaves as you have these two magnets and what kind of forces does, this, does these magnets exert on each other. So as before, I need to create what is called as the air geometry. To do that, create a new sketch, maybe um, just have a large enough air geometry and as before I will create the air geometry as a separate surface. So I go ahead and create a planar surface so I have two magnets that are not aligned as before and uh, I also have air geometry. Let's go ahead and save this model. So I have uh, two magnets, example two. Now we are ready to start this simulation. As before, the first step is to switch over to the EMWorks 2D manager and create what is called as a study. Now again, it's magnetostatic study. If you remember, if you have permanent magnets or if you have coils with DC current, we're going to do magnetostatic. And uh, there is one thing that we must do is to create a coordinate system. Let me align the coordinate system with the bottom left-hand corner. And I can go ahead and create a study. It's going to be a magnetostatic study and planar. At some point later videos, we will do some axisymmetric models. But right now, let's just stick to planar models. Now we have to define the materials. So we apply um, air to this larger. So there's something called favorite materials. You can keep many of these, um, any of the material as your favorite material. So it's very easy to apply air from the favorite material. And then the two magnets, we have to go ahead and let's supply neodymium. Now you notice that the magnets have been assigned materials, but not the direction. So I'm going to go ahead and define the coercivity direction coordinate system. This is along the x-axis. Uh, let's just make it big so we it's visible and say OK. So we have um, defined the direction for one magnet. Let's go ahead and do that for the second magnet. Take the coordinate system, but this time we want to keep it along y-axis and you can see the preview. So now these magnets are completely defined. They have a material and they also have a direction. And just like before, 
let's request the program to compute the force acting on the second magnet. So once the definition of the study is complete, we can go ahead and solve. Right click on study 1 and select run. Now EMS will automatically mesh and run the simulation. We can now take a look at the results. So let's start with the magnetic flux lines. So I'm going to go ahead change the format to contour lines. And you can see how the magnetic flux lines are distributed between the two magnets. So each magnet has its own flux lines but there is also um, an effect on each other and you can see how these flux lines are distributed. You can also take a look at the magnetic flux density plot to see areas of high flux density and so on as well as the magnetic field intensity plot. Okay. Now let us now look at the results table where we can now see what is the value of the force. So you can see now the force has two components. There's both force along the x-axis as well as the y-axis. So there is an, a minus x component that kind of pushes the second magnet towards the first magnet that you would expect. And also there's a minus y component that wants it to go down. So you want the flux lines to travel the shortest distance. As a result, the second magnet will somehow orient itself so that the first the flux lines can travel nicely between the two. Okay? So you can really see what kind of forces are acting on the second magnet.